Hey YouTube, in this video, we're gonna walk through how to use a regular wall switch with Big Ass Fan's Haiku Fan. Now, this is kind of a weird video because the Big Ass Fan or the Haiku Fan does not come with a regular wall switch. The Big Ass Fan itself comes with a remote. I'm not a big fan of using the remote, and I think it's also kind of weird to have guests use the remote to turn on and off the light ring. Usually controlling the fan's not as big of a deal, but controlling the light ring is kind of nice to have just something that's traditional. And so in this case, we're gonna walk through how to use Home Assistant, which is an open source project to do home automation, and then pair that with the big ass fan and the light switch to control them together. So here's an example of using a regular Leviton smart, smart switch. Here I can go ahead, turn the switch on, and here you can see that the light ring is turned on. If I go back to the switch, Press the off button. Here we can see that the light turns off. What's weird is neither of these are connected from a physical manner. We are gonna use the smarts of the automation to turn them on and off as you can see here. Now to go for the gold, one thing that we also wanna do is if the guest really wants to get nitpicky here, we can add the automation to control the brightness of the light ring. So using just the regular wall switch and having the up down brightness, we can increase, decrease the brightness and so forth and have those states synchronized between the fan. So right now you can see that it's currently dim. And then as we make changes on the light switch itself, um, right now you can't really see this, but I'm slowly incrementing the brightness on the wall switch. We can see the light the light ring itself increase in brightness. Again, we can turn the lights on and off. Both of those will work fine. Pretty easy for the guests to control. All right, so how does this actually work? Here I have the smart switch pulling out of the wall itself, and you can see that there's only two wires connected on this side. I've got my neutral and I've got my ground. And what's weird is one wire is missing here, and that's actually our hot or our load wire. And that's what you would typically connect to the fan. But we want to leave the fan connected all the time. And so what you're going to do is you're going to run the one white wire and cap the rest. You're going to run all your grounds and cap the rest. And then you're going to run all your hots and cap the rest. If I flip over the light switch, here you can see I have the one hot or quote load wire going back to the rest. Again, I don't connect the fan because the fan needs to be on all the time. The fan needs to be ready to receive the command either from the remote or from our automation to turn on and off the lights, turn on and off the fan speed and so forth. All right, cool. So we understand how to wire up the fan. What the heck is Home Assistant? So Home Assistant is an open source project, which means you can go look at the source code, you can go make changes to it, you can contribute to it and so forth. And Home Assistant controls all of the different smart things that are inside of your house. It could be a light switch, it could be a leak detector, it could be a fan in our case, it could be maybe having a, a smart lawnmower. Anything that you can think of, you can probably integrate it into Home Assistant. In fact, if you're thinking about buying a switch for this particular project, you can see there's tons of different third-party switches that you can go with. I happen to have Leviton switches throughout my house, so that's what I went with. I, I like Z-Wave switches, but you could do a Wi-Fi switch. You could do a Bluetooth switch. You could do whatever. It doesn't really matter as long as it's compatible with the 1800 plus vendors that they have integrations with. Now, the big ass fan itself is not a native integration into Home Assistant. However, Home Assistant is open source and someone has contributed a third party resource or a third party plugin for Home Assistant. I should say, quote, integration. So here is the integration itself. Uh, kudos to these four contributors for actually going and making this possible. What we would do is you can use a third party integration into Home Assistant called Hacks, which automates the installation of this component itself. Once you have Hacks, or actually let me go back into Home Assistant here. 
Hacks, like I said, is a third party integration. What we can do is we can search the hacks quote marketplace or store, whatever they call this thing. And we can look for sense me. That's the name of the integration. And it's already added in my particular case, but you would go ahead and run through the installation. The installation is super easy. Here they have it documented. It's even got pictures and inside of the YouTube description, I'll add some step-by-step -step document documentation in case you like reading rather than listening to me. So like I said, you'll go in, you'll add the integration. It will ask you to, or I'll actually do a discovery. If there's no discovery, then you can just enter in the IP address if you've connected your fan to your network. And then at that point, you're pretty much good to go. Now, what actually ties this all together is automation. So if we look at automations, here I have uh, two different automations for the Haiku fan. I have one to control on and off, basically turning the light ring on and off. And then I also have one to synchronize the brightness of the fan. So if you want it to run at 30%, if you want the light ring to run at 100%, if you want the light ring to run at you know, 2%, although I don't think 2% is an increment, but um, these are the two different automations. So if I edit this automation, what we do is we look at the state in Home Assistant, which basically says if the state is changing from off to on or from on to off on any of these two lights, which in this case, Home Assistant knows that there's a light on the Haiku fan and it knows that there's a light switch on my wall. If those turn from off to on or on to off, then we've got a little bit of a wild script here that basically says turn on or turn off. This little uh, doohickey here, basically property is going to state whether this should turn on or off. And then depending on what triggered this, we're gonna either turn the fan light on or we're gonna turn the light switch on. Because if you've pressed the light switch to turn on, you don't need to turn that on again, it's already on. You just need to turn the fan on or vice versa. If you we're using the remote and you turn the fan on. If you want it to be consistent, you would want your wall switch to be on. I guess it doesn't really matter in that case, but in either case, right, um, this is how the script works. And I'll post, I have a blog post that outlines this, so you can just copy and paste. In fact, if you're doing this yourself, what you would do is you would switch this to YAML mode, and then you can copy and paste the entire script off of my website and you don't have to write any of this. We do the same thing with brightness. If I take a look at brightness, we look at a state change for either the fan light brightness or the wall switch brightness. And I've added in this little delay here of two seconds. What it's gonna do is it's gonna wait two seconds and then it's gonna make the change. So earlier you were probably looking going, wow, the brightness has kind of a delay. That's intentional. If you start to change the brightness and you don't have this delay in there, Home Assistant will process that as multiple triggers and then your fan, your fan light might kind of turn into this disco-y type vibe. Maybe that's your type of vibe, but most people don't want that, so I would add a little bit of a delay, two, three seconds. It's probably gonna weed that out for you. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if the brightness is greater than zero, then go ahead and actually set the brightness of the fan or of the wall switch. This uses the same logic that we did before. If you change the brightness on the switch, you don't need to set that again, you just need to set it on the fan and vice versa. Again, this will be out on my blog, so you can switch into edit YAML mode, and then here you can just paste over the top. You don't have to do any hard work. So that's pretty much, that's all to it. Once you have gone through and added the automation in Home Assistant, you've set up the integration, that's it. You can just use your light switch to turn on and off the light to the fan. 
you can use the remote to the fan and turn it on and off. So if you really like the remote and your guests hate it, great. Um, you know, if you're looking at the home automation here, mine is in a master bedroom. I don't let my guests go in there. So I guess it doesn't really matter what they care. But if I was adding fans in other rooms, I would totally want a light switch for the guests. I, I think the, the remote is kind of a gimmick. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. I'm happy to help out. Otherwise, like I said, I've put a link to my blog post, which has all these instructions as well. And yeah, good luck.